Hi everybody and welcome to this week's LEGO Technic video. What I'd like to present to you this week is a method for measuring uh, gear losses within a gearbox. So what I'm trying to do is measure the amount of loss within a gearbox between the motor and the output. And the reason for this video is I designed this automatic gearbox quite a while ago now and at the time I thought it was a really good design and it was going to work great. But as it turns out it didn't work as expected so I just give you a demonstration of this gearbox so the idea is, is that when you turn it on and we've got the motor driving the output and when you put some loading on that output it will change gears or change the gearing ratio and generate more torque at the output and when I demonstrated the gearbox it uh, did obviously work you can see the speed at the output reducing once I put some loading on there uh, the gearbox ratio is being changed but as it turned out that when I did uh, do a follow-up video and I built this into a automatic car it didn't really work at all. The uh, the losses incurred within the gearbox in the uh, second gear are actually greater than in the first gear and the output uh, output torque wasn't as much as I expected. So what I'm going to present to you today is a method for actually uh, measuring the losses in a gearbox. So what we're trying to do is measure the input power, the output power and work out the difference between the two in order to work out the losses in the gearbox. And of course the idea of that particular method is that that way you can actually test and quantify the uh, efficiency of the gearbox before you actually build it into a larger project and find that it uh, didn't work as expected. So if you're interested in this topic, please keep watching. Alright, so to work out the efficiency of the gearbox or the losses in the gearbox, all we need to do is to work out the work being done by the motor on the left here and compare it to the work at the output. So I've got some equations here that uh, calculate those two numbers. So on the left here we've got uh, the work done by the motor, motor work, uh, Wm is equal to the torque on the axle, output axle of the motor, times the angle moved by that axle. So if you move the axle a certain number of degrees or radians and multiply that by the torque being experienced by that axle that is equal to the amount of work being done by the motor at the input. Then uh, in the same way at the output we've got the same equations so the work at the output is the torque being experienced by the output axle times the angle that the output axle uh, rotates. Now in order to generate torque on the output axle what we're doing is lifting a weight so we've got some sort of wheel pulling on a string and that string is lifting a mass or a weight with mass m and it's doing that across a radius of r so that torque is simply the force being experienced times the radius that's the definition of torque it's force at uh, 90 degrees to the radius and of course that force is simply equal to m times g where g is the gravitational constant and m is that mass uh, measured in kilograms so now that gives us the equation for the output work so it's force times radius times the angle moved uh, at the output now there's a relationship between the output angle and the, <clears throat> and the input angle and that's simply given by the output angle is the input angle times the gearing ratio so for example if the gearing ratio is one third or one fifth then the output angle will be uh, for example a third of the input angle and then the overall efficiency of the gearbox is simply given by the output work divided by the input work so obviously if there's no losses this will be 100% because the output work will be the same as the input work but typically you know of course the output work will be less there will be losses in the gearbox and by calculating the efficiency uh, we can uh, compare different gearboxes and um, yeah, compare their relative performances. Okay, so this is the theory of how to do the work measurement. So how do we actually measure some of these parameters in practice? Now at the output it's relatively easy. Uh, for example, we know for a particular wheel that we're going to use, we know the radius. That's just simply a matter of measuring. It's going to be constant. Uh, we know the mass that uh, we're going to be lifting. Was that something we attach to the string and we can measure and it's constant. So therefore uh, the output work is pretty straightforward. The only thing we need to know is the uh, angle of rotation at the output, but because that's related to the input angle of rotation times our gearing ratio, which is a constant as well, it really just comes down to measuring these two parameters. So we need to know the angle of rotation at, uh, that the motor did, the motor axle, and the torque on the motor. Now the most difficult one to work out is the torque on the motor, but it's actually uh, still relatively simple. What we need to use is a relationship between um, the 
torque of a motor and the speed. So what this graph here shows you is a linear relationship between that torque and the speed and what happens is as the torque increases the speed decreases. Now this particular graph was generated by uh, Phil O. It's on his website. It's, uh, he's got a whole lot of different graphs for different motors. This is for a Control Plus large motor that I've been using in this experiment. And what this allows us to do that if we can work out the speed uh, we can work out the torque. So for example if the speed is 250 RPM then we know the torque at the output is 6 Newton centimeters. So this is uh, what I'm going to be using to work out uh, the torque at the uh, input or the motor torque. What we need to do is simply measure the speed of the motor and then we can work out the torque. Uh, so that makes it fairly straightforward. Okay, so that's how I measure the uh, input torque of the motor by using that relationship between the speed and the torque and the other parameter we needed was the angle of rotation of the motor axle. Now rather than trying to measure that uh, physically by observing it, a, a much simpler way is to use the Powered Up app uh, which actually allows you to measure uh, motor angles directly. So that's what I've done in this case, I've set up an app on a, a smart tablet and that app is, connects to the hub which connects to the motor and that allows me to directly uh, measure the motor angle so that gives you a very accurate way of uh, measuring the angle of rotation of that motor and therefore the overall input work done by the motor. Okay so now that I've gone through the theory I'll just show you my experimental setup so here at the back I've got uh, my weights uh, some silver bars nice and heavy and they've been pulled up by the string which is connected to my motor and powered up hub at the top and that string is being wrapped around this large sprocket wheel uh, which is about 6.3 centimeters across and it's being driven by a large power functions motor and uh, one important point is that I've got the hub connected to a 9 volt power supply uh, it's really important for that voltage to be constant and reliable uh, typically you find with batteries they do uh, the charge you know does go down and the voltage does change which affects your experimental results and then of course I've got the whole lot driven by a tablet uh, with a powered up um, program in the background to run the experiments alright so let's explain how I use the powered up app for running this experiment so essentially what I'm doing is I'm turning on the motor lifting the weight for a certain amount of time and then I'm measuring the angle of rotation of the uh, motor axle and the way I do that I've just got a program in the background I'll just to show you how that works so what I've got over here I just react to a button I turn on the motor to 100% speed uh, I then wait for 0.3 per second just to get the motor up to, uh, to speed and get the system moving so that's in a sort of a steady movement state I then at that point uh, reset the internal angle measurement for that uh, motor axle and then I run the experiment for one second so it'll lift the weight for one second and then what I do, I take that output measurement and display it on a dial. The, uh, that's the angle of rotation of the motor axle and then I stop the motor. So let's give you a demonstration of how that works. So let's go back to the screen. So it's all that's connected to the yellow button. So as soon as I push that yellow button, the weight will start lifting. For one second, it will stop and then it will show me the output angle or the angle of rotation of that motor axle. So we'll just do that now. Off we go. <laughs> Bang, look at that, that was one second, and we can see we're rotated 1586 degrees in that one second. So in order to work out the work done by the motor, we go back to our motor work equation, and we can see that the work is the torque times the angle moves, so we've got the angle here. And of course we've got to, be, uh, got to convert that to radians, so you need to divide that by 360, multiply by pi. In order to work out the torque, we need to go back to our torque speed relationship so that is using this graph here so that's for the motor so if we know the speed we can work out the torque so to work out the speed all we need to do is take that angle of 1568 degrees 1586 divide by 360 so that is the number of revolutions rotated in that one second that the experiment ran multiply that by 60 to get revolutions per minute so we've got 264 so that 264 can then be looked up on this relationship here so we just follow this graph here to about 264 and that is about there now of course normally I'd just use a, a program to work this out but this is just illustration so we'd come down here and we'd see that the torque is about 5.5 newton centimeters 
So we put that back into our equation to work out the input work. So now we've got the torque, we've got the angle moves. So that gives us our input work and then we can work out the output work in the same way. So we've got the torque times the angle moved. So we work out the angle moves from the um, you know, from the input motor and that relationship between that and the gearing ratio. So in this particular case I've got a gearing ratio of one fifth. So I just need to take this number here, that angle, uh, divide by five. That gives me the output angle of rotation. And then the torque on the output is simply the force times the radius. So in the case of my wheel, my radius is about 3.3 centimeters. And the force, just given by the weight or the mass pulling down, is the mass times the gravitational constant. So the gravitational constant is about 9.81. So that's just Earth's gravity. Multiply the mass by multiply by the mass, and my mass is about 700 grams. That gives me the force, and then I can put that back in here. Work out the output work. And then I can simply work out the efficiency by dividing the output work by the input work, and that gives me the overall efficiency of that gearbox in between, uh, you know, the motor and the output. And then that way, by working out that efficiency for different gearbox setups, I can compare the different gearboxes and work out, you know, which one gives me the best efficiency, and uh, allows me to conclude which one's the better one. Okay, so I'll just tell you about the first experiment I did. I used a very simple gearing system, just an 8 tooth driving and 40 tooth gear to create an overall 1 to 5 gearing ratio. And then I um, did the experiment by using different weights. So for my weights, I've just used New Zealand silver bars, uh, 10 ounce bars are about 310 grams each. And I've just used different numbers of these in this basket and then tested to see uh, what the results were. And so if I do run, for example, the two bar experiment just like that, what you do find is that every time you run the experiment, you'll get some sort of value here, 1574 degrees. And then if you run it again, you'll typically find you get a different result. So I'll run it again, 1574, and now it's 1605, so a little bit further. And of course, what you do find is every time you do run the experiment, you will get a slight different value. So what I've done, I've just uh, run, it, uh, run each experiment five times and taken the average just to get some uh, better statistical averaging and then like I said I've done that for a different number of bars so if I do add a bar to the weight just by putting it in there like that um, that's a bit awkward okay there we go and then we run that one let's lift it up a little bit there we go. so now instead of 1500 we're getting about 1445 so you can see here that Lifting more weight will give you a lower uh, number of degrees in terms of that axle movement. It is expected because of course it's harder to lift a heavier weight and it can't be done as quickly. Alright, so I've repeated that experiment a number of times and collated the results. So like I said, what I've done here, I've lifted two bars, three bars, four bars and five bars of silver, giving me these uh, weights here overall. And of course the basket weighs a certain amount of weight as well. That's added on initially, is about 47 grams. And then I've done all the calculations as explained in the uh, previous parts of the video. And from the bottom here you can see the efficiency for each uh, amount of weight lifted and int interestingly enough the efficiency is about 80% so that means about 20% of the torque or energy is being lost somewhere now of course part of that will be in those gears part of that will be in the wheel axle uh, lifting up the weight uh, and perhaps other parts as well obviously in the axles uh, friction rubbing against the lift arms and things like that uh, for three bars, interestingly enough, the efficiency was slightly higher. And again, for four bars, it's slightly higher again. But then once we got to five bars, there was a, a big drop. And I think that's simply because of that amount of weight on the overall mechanism. You probably find that that axle, um, you know, holding the weight was starting to, to bend a bit and you get a lot more friction uh, against the rubbing. So you can see that the efficiency does change with the amount of weight. Uh, but yeah, 80% I guess it's not too bad. It's still uh, just for two gears I kind of feel that you know it would be nicer to be more efficient, but I guess 20% loss isn't uh, too bad overall In the next experiment I thought well it'd be interesting to see other ways of generating a 1 to 5 gearing ratio And of course one way to do that is to have a 1 to 3 followed by a 3 fifths So the 3 fifths times the 1 third will make it 1 fifth now of course the big difference here is instead of just having two gears We've got four gears, and that will generate an overall gearing ratio of one-fifth as well. And I 
ended up bracing the whole system like this and of course the bracing is very important if you do get buckling or twisting of your whole mechanism it can affect the result as well so I'll just show you uh, how this particular implementation performed so here is the results there and you can see just looking at the bottom line the efficiency results they are a little bit less so instead of going uh, went from 80% down to 74 so losing about an extra 5% this one went from about 80% as well down to 72 so losing a little bit more and of course the pattern here is that the efficiency is decreasing with increasing weight so of course increasing torque is putting more frictions on those gears uh, and by the time we got the four bars we're down to 68% and interestingly enough uh, by the time we got the five bars the whole mechanism actually stalled it, it wouldn't actually lift at all uh, of course the uh, motor speed is getting down quite a bit down 192 rpm uh, and of course the next point would have been a lot less so yeah big difference between uh, just using two gears and using four gears you just lose more efficiency and I'm guessing the more gears you use uh, in your gearing mechanism the, the lower the overall efficiency so really important um, you know to look at the number of gears that you're using and also how you brace them I haven't done a lot of bracing experiments yet I want to do that in the future and just compare how different implementations of the bracing and axle lengths and, and things on that as well affect the results okay and now for the results we'll be waiting for the experiments on the original automatic two-speed gearbox so what I've done in this experiment is first of all force the gear to, uh, the gearbox to be in gear one and then gear two so in gear one the overall gearing ratio between the input and output is simply one to one and therefore I've run that at the output through a one to five gearing ratio using an eight to forty and then in gear 2 this gearing ratio is of course lower it's about 0.775 and then I've also run that through the 1 to 5 at the output uh, just be able to compare the results and yes the results from these experiments are as follows so first of all gear 1 uh, lifting one bar of weight so you can see here the overall efficiency much much lower than uh, even just a 1 to 5 gearing so of course the overall gearing is 1 to 5 but compared just to simple a 1 to 5 gearing of 8 to um, to a 40 gives us 80 percent and now here we're down to 37.3 for five percent I've tried to lift two bars but the whole thing is jammed up and wouldn't actually lift at all so I've given that zero percent efficiency and in between a weight of about one and a half bars is only 26.5 percent so clearly uh, big losses in this gearbox you probably find a similar result in most gearboxes as soon as you add uh, you know more than a few gears the efficiency really does reduce however perhaps in this particular gearbox it's uh, more than average and then uh, looking at gear number two look at that so even though the gearing ratio is lower it goes down to 0 0.155 which is about three quarters uh, of the original gearing ratio we find the efficiency is now even lower we're down to 21 percent and 16 percent for one and a half bars and that explains why this particular gearbox actually performed worse switching from gear one to gear two we can see here the efficiencies are really quite low and of course the output overall output um, torque that we experience will be a lot lower uh, or, or no better in gear two compared to gear one so that explains why this particular gearbox was a bit of a failure so but uh, of course you know with this particular experimental setup it does give the opportunity to redesign this kind of gearbox and be able to measure uh, different design implementations and really try to improve upon its performance uh, without of course having to build it into a bigger model like I said earlier and uh, yeah it gives a really good opportunity to uh, make many more improvements okay thanks for watching hope you really enjoyed this video and got something out of it please like and subscribe this channel i really appreciate that and hopefully uh, i can improve upon this gearbox design using this setup so again thanks for watching uh, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time bye